No. 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 Yep, you've guessed it, I was scammed. So I had a clear and simple vision previously on Da Vinci. So I've done 12, I've done 24 volts, so I'm gonna move on to 48 volt. So stay tuned for more of those builds coming up. But it went off the rails. Unfortunately, being in the UK, you have to wait a very long time for batteries to be delivered, which is not great when you're trying to get projects done to make the most of the sun. So stay tuned to the end where I'll show you how much this actually cost me and how I'm going about the process of trying to get a refund. So my goal was simple. I wanted to avoid more of this and I didn't want to pay this. So that was it really. That was the reason I wanted to go to 48 volt to give me more options, more storage and be able to run more things at the same time. So this goes beyond just trying to cover the off-grid setup that I've got to keep running my home and actually get my grid usage down to as low as possible. I also wanted to actually prepare for the future because at some point my gas boiler is going to go bang and I'm going to need to replace it. And I don't really want to do that. But with the current setup in the UK, installing heat pumps is just so expensive. So I'm going to have to try and ride the wave for as long as possible so I can sort that one out. So you've probably guessed it by now, at some point in future, I'm gonna to have to go on grid to make the most of what my setup's likely to look like. So with a heat pump as the main example and moving my cooking from gas to fully electric. So anyway, back to the scam and actually the batteries that I received. So I ordered 16 of these 320 amp hour lithium ion phosphate cells to try and build that 48 volt battery. So my hope was once it was constructed, obviously all the cells were top balanced, ready to go, and then hooked up to a BMS, I was hoping to have something like 16 kilowatt hours on tap. So my initial excitement turned to dread when I opened the first couple of boxes up. The packing was terrible, and one of the boxes had three damaged cells in where it was obviously dropped during shipping. So on closer inspection, you can see the damage to the terminals, they're all over the place. And to be fair to the supplier, they did offer to replace the cells, but I'll cover more of what that meant later on in the video. So the next and more troubling issue that I found was actually swollen cells. Now for anyone that knows or has seen or has received any of these kind of cells in lithium ion phosphate terms, you'll know that this is a dreadful situation to be in because you know the cells are not of good quality and likely to be really degraded. So in my case, the cells were so bloated that I couldn't even put on the bus bars that they'd supplied to actually connect the cells together. So after I dealt with my initial crushing disappointment, I got to work to try and find out what capacity these cells actually had. So this is my trusty uh, battery tester here, and I use this for testing my lithium ion phosphate cells. It's uh, one in progress at the moment, as you can probably hear. So it's testing this cell over here, this uh, 280 amp hour cell. Um, but this is what I primarily use just to test what comes over from China, just to make sure that I have got the capacity that was promised when I purchased. So after I completed the first test, which as you can imagine on cells this size with one battery tester takes a little while, I checked the results and I couldn't believe how much different they were from the 320 amp hour that were originally promised. So I then tested the second cell, which gave me similar results. I opened the dispute process on Alibaba and kicked things off. So the whole process took about a month, and that was me testing every single cell, providing all the data, all the output that I got from my battery tester to just show the capacity wasn't what was promised in the first place. So I had partial refund offers throughout the whole dispute process, but it didn't come anywhere near the fact that these cells were knackered and nowhere near the capacity I'd actually paid for in the first place. So I've been using Alibaba and AliExpress for years, and I've never had a problem with the dispute process. But this time, for some reason, Alibaba went on the seller's side, meaning the fact that because I rejected everything that was offered and I actually wanted either a refund or replacement of the sales, they actually closed down my dispute without any refund. So this is where Plan C came into effect. So in anticipation of the likely comments or questions I'm going to get as a result of this video and some of the ones that have come up on past videos in the fact that why am I getting my batteries from China or my solar generators or power banks from China, 
please post in the section below if you've got anywhere else that can supply them at a reasonable cost and of decent quality. So one of the primary reasons I share my experience on this channel is so that you don't have to make the same mistakes I do. So sometimes you have to break a few of these to make some omelettes. So in terms of making any kind of solar battery system, you sometimes have to try out things you wouldn't normally try and it does sometimes cost me money so you don't have to waste yours. So I am currently looking for other reliable Chinese manufacturers and suppliers as well as other options for people that live in the UK because let's face it, it's not the US and it's not parts of Asia or Australia where you can actually get batteries pretty quick and you can deal with it a lot easier because they have local suppliers and distributors. It goes without saying that if you live in the UK at the moment and you understand how much everything costs, this is just something else that really doesn't need to be that way. So again, if there are any reliable Chinese manufacturers out there, please reach out to me via the uh, contact email address which is on the YouTube page. So how to salvage this whole mess? Well, this is where the credit card comes into play. Now this is not financial advice in any shape or form, it's just my experience of how I've dealt with this issue. So I raised a dispute against the payment that was made to Alibaba in terms of the batteries. So this actually had one of two routes to go down. And again, I'm not an expert on this, this is just the process that I've followed. So no advice is coming from me on this one, I need to be clear on that. There are two options. The first option is a chargeback, where as you can imagine, the payment then gets charged back to the supplier, so in this case, Alibaba. And the other option is if that fails, you've got section 75, which basically means that the credit card company has a joint liability. So that's another route to get your money back. But at the moment, I can't speak any more about this because I'm still at the chargeback stage. So now to the reveal of how much this actually cost. So I've just put it up on screen now. So that's the US dollar value. So obviously the, the amount that came out of my account was close to 1500 pounds. So this isn't small money we're talking here. So what I'll do is I will give you an update on where I've got with the claim in future videos. And if I'm still keeping the batteries and I can't find a way to get them back, if that's what actually has to happen in the end and show you what I can actually do with them. So in conclusion, I thought I'd covered as many bases as I could with this particular purchase, but obviously I'd missed some of the signs and you don't know what you're gonna get until it lands on your doorstep. But the problem I also found was the fact that the tactics that are used by some of these suppliers is actually to make sure that you keep these batteries which aren't really grade A, they're not even probably grade B in some cases, but they want to make sure that you keep hold of them so that they can actually just give you some kind of token discount so they don't have to take them back, obviously because the more they can shift out of their warehouse, the better for them and the better for their sales. So one thing I just want to share with you as a final piece on this is the fact that I actually raised about the swollen cell issue and this is the response I got. If you found this video interesting, pop a like in, come back to see how this all panned out and if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, just pop them in the section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to DadVinci.